What's your favorite planet? Mine's the sun. Hey, doctor, have you ever seen an eclipse? Yes. You know, if you stare at it head on, it'll burn your eyes out. I once took a pair of binoculars and stared at the sun for over an hour. Well, if you haven't heard yet, on April 8th, our country, our planet, our Earth, uh, is going to have a solar eclipse that's going to pass over the United States. Now, not every state and every city is going to see a full eclipse, but if you are in the path, you will get to actually see that eclipse. Now, we're in Central Florida. We're not going to get the full effect, and I think I've seen everything from saying somewhere in the high 60 percentile to, you know, 80-something percentile as far as a, a total eclipse or 60 to 80 percent of a total eclipse. However, regardless whether you're getting the full eclipse or not, it's still not safe to stare at the sun or at an eclipse because if you didn't know, if you're staring at an eclipse, you're staring at the sun. Well, it's not, not, not best to stare at it, the sun during an eclipse, you know. But it's hard not to. Um, so just wanted to throw that tidbit of information in there for you and make sure that you're not staring at the sun, even though it's very tempting. Now, we actually wrote an article about this uh, back in 2017, and it got like millions of hits and views on the website, and uh, it, we were just really surprised. And now we're seeing a lot of the same things that we saw then. In other words, we're seeing tons of sites that are saying, hey, buy these glasses, hey, uh, here's how to watch an eclipse, and all those things are great, and that's true that you can buy the, the viewing glasses to see the eclipse, uh, but... There's many times something that you have around that will probably work just fine, but you got to make sure that it meets the qualification, and that's a welding helmet. And you may say, well, I don't have a welding helmet. No, but probably your Uncle Jim Bob does, or your grandpa, or your father, or your brother, or your cousin, or your, maybe even your sister. So reach out to them and say, hey, can I borrow your welding helmet? I want to watch this eclipse. Now, we do have a few recommendations we want to go over before you just throw on a welding helmet and stare at the sun. Because unless you have a welding helmet that has auto darkening feature on it, it's probably not dark enough for what NASA recommends as well as the ISO requirements. Now specifically, ISO standards 12312-2 deals with filters for direct observation of the sun. Now you may also see 12312-2 2015. Both of those are the same. So any shades, whether they're glasses, whether they're welding glasses, uh, cutting torch glasses, welding helmets, need to comply to that ISO standard of 12312-2 or 12312-2-2015. Now what does all that mean? Well, I'll break it down and let you know what NASA says. NASA says that a welding helmet, if used to view the sun, needs to be at a shade 12 or greater. Now, a lot of your auto darkening helmets will go anywhere, probably some in the low range of say five of a shade, all the way up to 13 and 14. Some of them stop at 12, but most all of the auto darkening helmets you see out there today, and again, don't take that as the gospel, go ahead and research it for yourself to make sure your helmet complies. But most of them that we see out there today do go at 12 and above. All five of these auto darkening helmets right here all go above 12, a couple of them up to 14, but the rest of them are at least 13. So we can safely view the eclipse with these welding helmets. But let me give you a couple of tips before you get started. Now, when you get this helmet from uh, Uncle Jim Bob, it's probably gonna be nice and nasty, kind of like ours is. So I'd recommend getting something safe for plastic like a sprayway glass cleaner. This is not an ad or sponsorship for Sprayway, but that is my favorite glass cleaner, whether you're cleaning glass or plastic. Uh, it doesn't have ammonia in it, so it won't scratch. And use a soft microfiber, preferably one that's very clean or very new. And you don't want to scrub hard on this, you just want to kind of wipe. But chances are, yours may look a lot like ours or even worse, so there's a lot of scuffs on here. And lo and behold, if I didn't open the drawer to our welding cart and found this, so... Typically when you buy a welding helmet, you'll get an extra lens. And not only that, an extra internal lens also. So let's just quickly replace this, which is easy to do on the chest welder helmet. And by the way, I think this helmet's like a hundred bucks, maybe 120 bucks. And it's definitely my favorite welding helmet that has that panoramic uh, view. The, the sides are not auto darkening, uh, but the centerpiece is. 
uh, and it's got a really large window. And it's just great to see. Anyway, so real quickly, just pop these clips out. Once you get those out, these buttons pop out. And there's a cover on both sides. I'd take off one side. And then once the clips are back on, now you've got a nice, pretty lens. So either clean your lens or replace it. And just like out there, typically here on the back side, this one's usually a little easier. It's usually got a little tab and you can just kind of pop these out. So cleanliness first, right? Anyway, so let's get to the important stuff. So now you've got a nice clean lens uh, that you'll be able to see a little better through. Not that the sun's gonna need it, but anyway, this is the important setting. So somewhere probably inside the helmet or sometimes on the outside of the helmet, such as right here, this one's on the outside of the helmet that you actually shake, actually, such as, such as right here on this clutch helmet, the shading is actually here on the outside of the helmet, but somewhere you've got a sensitivity and uh, a shade adjustment and probably a something like a grind weld and that might hit your low range or high range of shading. You definitely want to know weld. I would set the sensitivity at least in the middle, maybe even somewhat high and that's going to basically trigger it faster and also set your delay somewhere in the middle as well. And as you can see here, this has the shading set for five to nine or nine to 13. I've got it slid over to nine to 13. And then on the dial here, I have it set to this setting of 12. So you can see there's eight and 12 and there's nine and 13. But since I have it on the nine to 13, I know that's set for 12. Now also make sure you do a testing on your, on your lens to make sure it's darkening. I don't know if you can see through right there, but then I'm gonna hit the test button and you see it goes dark. So you wanna make sure it's dark. Also, if you push this and it says low battery like that one right there, you need to replace your batteries as well. Last thing you want to be doing is in the middle of an eclipse, staring at the sun and the auto darkening go off like this battery is dying and it go light on you. Now I've got the headgear out of this auto darkening helmet so that we can actually kind of see this happen here and let's see if we can get a good view. So there's, there we go and we go up to the sun. And now we're blacked out. So now we can get a good view of the sun without hurting our eyes. So in short, if you want to watch this total eclipse happen, then make sure that your welding helmet has a darkness feature of at least 12 and preferably a auto darkening feature. Also, if you're wearing those shades, make sure they comply with the ISO standards of 12312-2 or 12312-2 colon dot dot 2015. Hey, uh, you don't have to buy a welding helmet by any means. Just borrow one from somebody and make sure that it, it works. Uh, also, keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And by all means, if you hated our video, well, don't watch it. No, I'm kidding. Then give us a thumbs down, but would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day. Keep smiling.